Greetings dear viewers, I am Tulip Chaudhuri welcoming you to episode 4 of Hourglass Trails, my show in which I try to make a difference to your thoughts of the day. Today we are going to look into creativity as seen through an artist's eyes and a musician's eyes. So the creativity itself coming from humans was a debated subject for a long time. Uh, it was not recognized as a human thing, rather as a divine thing that happened from mm -hmm. God. Uh, we began recognizing human beings and as creating something from Renaissance period. And today we'll be looking at two different forms, one that comes with sound and the other one that comes through silence. Mm. Both are unique in their own ways. We'll be looking into music, which is art that balances sounds with the time. And we'll be looking at art, which is a medium of art done through painting uh, color on a solid surface. And these both are expressions of our aesthetic beings. And in this respect, today I have with me Procheta Mukherjee Olson. She is an artist, poet, and a curator. And I have Dorothy Creswell. She is a former teacher, singer, and songwriter. So welcome, Procheta, to Thank my you. show. And thank you, thank for having you me. very much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. And Dorothy, welcome to my show. Thank you very much. You're and welcome. Thank you for that introduction. I, I uh, to think far, far back like that, and to imagine the Renaissance time just when things were starting to be acknowledged. I, I haven't thought about that in a long time. So thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah. thank you to you for giving me this time to join. Sure. Yeah. Now let's, uh, Dorothy, you know, you remind me of yourself every morning when wake, I wake up. It's not a, for a ride that you often give me, but birds are singing so much these days. Uh, I mean, and with all the confusion in the weather patterns, mm -hmm. it seems uh, some birds have come back when they're not supposed to. They have been silent through the winter and mm -hmm. spring birds are here. Yes, it's true. So they sing. Yes, so they do. I remember you because you sing. <laughs> it's a very natural thing for yeah. many of us. <laughs> yes. And I refer to our boys as often as feathery musicians. Mm, yes. But if someday we decipher their language, who knows? They, they may be calling us featherless musicians. <laughs> Maybe so. More featherless likely. musicians. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That would be the name of a nice band. or. Featherless musicians <laughs> or feathering yeah. musicians yeah, yeah. flocking together. Flocking but together. There we right. go. Yeah. And I'm quite sure they began uh, music history before, right, Procheta? They began singing before humans did. Yes. <coughs> yes. It's um, interesting. I remember in college I had a professor who um, asked us where the sense of time and music came from, mm -hmm. and he said something about heartbeats. Oh. and mm -hmm. uh, tribal drumming kind of r not necessarily resonating with but or not simply that but responding to the rhythm of the heartbeat mm -hmm. and so so That's it's very basic isn't i didn't it? know this yes. you see how we learn from each other mm -hmm. so dorothy this yeah. is a mystery how you manage such beautiful tunes and words and everything together but the force of the creativeness within us Mm -hmm. I think is always sort of a mystery. Yes. And I'm sure I have to, um, shared some things from Tagore with you before to at North Bridges. Yes. So there's Tagore is uh, often questions about who is this being who sits in the back of our mind and the soul and makes us create. Oh, interesting. So would you say, but we create for others. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we create something for ourselves because it makes our souls happy. Yes. So when you write songs, 
what's the first thing you do? I mean, it's a lot about listening. So yes. do you think about what you want to do, what makes you happy, or the people who will be listening to your songs? Yes. Those are very interesting questions. For me, sometimes I set out to write a song. Mm -hmm. I'll say, like when I was teaching and we were doing a unit on families, I said, I want a song that represents the families of these children. And so I would write a song that, that names their life experiences and who they live with and who they love and who cares for them because I couldn't find a, book, a song like that already mm -hmm. available. So that is a purpose. But many, many, many times I have that experience of what you were saying of this, this other voice that has its own idea. And it's often when I first wake up in the morning. If I wake up in the morning, and as you said, if I'm listening, I'll often wake up with a line or two singing in my heart or in my mind. And thankfully now we have iPhones that can record right away. So I, I get up early, I find something to record, and I'll sing those first few lines. Then I can go back to sleep, and then in the morning <laughs> I get up and add to it. But yeah. I get the gift of the beginning from that, that inner voice whatever that source is. So it's different, different times. Yeah, yeah thank you for sharing that. And mm -hmm. I think quite uh, often, many of us are like hooked to our digital world. Isn't that so? <laughs> it's the same with us. I mean, yeah. me too. When I want to see something, uh, listen to something, we go to our iPhone, phones and or anything that's nearby on the internet. Well, I... So close by. I am 64 now, and I did not always have a handy mm -hmm. recording device, yeah. but I have always had songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you find a way. If you do it by singing it over and over to yourself, or if you write it out onto sheet music, some, some way to capture that song before it leaves. Mm -hmm. because yeah. So there, where there is a will, there is a way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, Dorothy, I was wondering, I mean, I write a little bit, so when mm -hmm. I write, mm -hmm. I often think of my readers. Yes. You so, write more than a little bit. <laughs> but when <laughs> Rochette writes, I could imagine like you would be more focused on what the eyes are seeing, right? I mean, it's more to do with the eyes. I think it depends on what the purpose of the writing is, as in, and also each, each thing has its own place. So for example, if it's poetry, then it probably functions more at par with um, how I function in making my paintings. Mm -hmm. So it's a more organic, okay. um, there's, the whole process is a lot more poetic, even though intellect is functioning there. Yeah. But if I'm, if the purpose of my writing is to write an academic paper discoursing on mm -hmm. art, then it's a lot more like construction and you have to think and construct just like you would. Okay. I don't know. Some, I don't know. It's it's a lot more prosaic the process. Okay, yeah. thank you. That's great to know. And I was. Uh, I mean, since we have, um, but you have more to think about when mm -hmm. you write a song. You have to think of the depth of your words. Mm -hmm. You have to think about the tune that you add. Mm -hmm. Or do you call it melody? Both. Both. Okay. Either word is fine. And then you have to think of your l listeners. Yes. And you have to think of the instruments you will play. Lots of things to balance. Uh, can you share a little bit about how you balance all that and at the same time know that it will be happy something to that we would listen to? Right, and that be someone happy. would enjoy. Yeah, enjoy. Um, you're correct in that you do think somewhat mm -hmm. of your audience. Basically, I think my initial purpose with any song is to convey a message. Okay. It may be to capture a memory. Mm -hmm. It may be to honor someone or mm -hmm. a certain experience. Um, but when I'm writing, I will choose different lyrics, different vocabulary words, mm -hmm. different concepts depending on who I'm writing for. If I'm yeah. writing for young children, I certainly use uh, 
words that I know they'll grasp readily. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will intentionally put in a, a word that they're less familiar with because I know it, that music opens our minds and that they can they can learn a new vocabulary word and use it and, and understand it. But anyway, yeah, the audience does make a difference. And the melody, as you say, definitely goes hand in hand with what's the message I'm conveying? Am I conveying sadness or the desire for courage mm -hmm. through a hard time? Mm -hmm. Then definitely the, the melody will be very, very different than if I'm, I'm celebrating yeah. the discovery of a flower popping up in the garden. <laughs> you know, it's, it is, you definitely cho yeah. choose the chords and the melody to go with the mood. Um, I am not one who writes for other instruments. Okay. So I will hear a melody or compose mm -hmm. a melody to go with the mood of the song, and I can add it to guitar or keyboard, but after that, Someone else who plays the flute might mm -hmm. add, I have a friend who will add her flute to my music and oh, oh. I just love it. But she's the one who brings that gift to it. I, I haven't told her. Oh. So different, different parts of, different people have different gifts and bring yeah. different things to it. Thank you for sharing all that. It mm -hmm. seems to me like, mm, usually I would think, uh, I mean people write songs or poetry out of their own things, but to me, your writing, your song, everything is coming with the goodness of giving to the mankind more than mm. your own things, your own emotional being. Thank you. That's amazing to know. This is really a new thing for me because I am still, we are always learning mm. and I still think it's, we often write or whatever we do, creative work is comes from the bowers of our soul. Well, I Thank truly, you. truly believe that just like each bird has their song, mm -hmm. I, I totally believe that each person has a message, mm -hmm. has a way of seeing it, yeah. and it has their voice. Mm -hmm. um, so my songs will convey a certain thing. Your poems, your writings will convey something. Your writing and your art, mm -hmm. each of us is, is another voice that we all are yeah. richer for. I had a question. So when you um, write something and someone else adds, say, for example, your friend with the flute mm -hmm. adds their tune to it, do you ever find yourself um, like at that moment where the writing and the, tu the melody are mm -hmm. kind of like that marriage mm -hmm. is happening? Do you add, do you improvise and change words or add words? Do you feel like that hap that's part of the process? It is. It's a crea it, The theme here is creativity, right. and yes, indeed. It's Just like a writer will edit, a musician will edit mm -hmm. and try different ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yes, yeah, sometimes when you add percussion, mm -hmm. it gets a whole different feeling. As you were saying, the heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. Um, and. Um, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's very, it's a lot of fun to work with other people mm -hmm. adding their ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll Prachita, uh, yes. I would like to know as an artist, you talk to everyone who sees your art, but mm -hmm. that's through colors. But at the same time, you have a theme and expression you want to give in your pictures. But uh, colors themselves have a psychology of their own, right? Mm -hmm. Like red is for happiness, uh, white is for peace. So when you are writing, uh, or, or sorry, painting, do you think of the colors first or what you want to do first? What you want to paint? Or do you match to both of them together when you are doing the art? I, I cannot say that I have never conceptualized or thought in terms of like like the form what we would call the formal properties like color line mm -hmm. or just the design aspect so to speak uh, but no that's not that's not the primary concern and I actually don't think that I speak to people through color okay. I think that I speak to people through the images and okay. the narrative okay. so what's happening, what's being depicted. I don't want to say the story because even that sounds too, um, like almost 
Like that sounds too simplistic, but whatever is happening mm -hmm. is more, like I feel like that's what's doing the speaking. So okay. even if it was um, black and white, for example, mm -hmm. it would still say the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, Maybe yeah. not in the same way, uh -huh. but um, like for example, whatever's going on here, it, it could very well may have been black and white and it would still have okay. a similar effect or conversation, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now, you are doing your master's in your UMass, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I'm going to uh, finish in two months. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. And can you, uh, I know that you are working something between storyline and a historian. Can you, it's very interesting. Can you please tell us exactly what kind of art you are doing here? I mean, what's your major here? Um, I've at the risk of like repeating myself because mm -hmm. I feel like every time I write a statement, I start with the sentence. So I'm almost like aware of like, I don't know, I'm sick of hearing myself say this, but it's true. <laughs> that's why I have to say it. Yes. But it's something to the, do with India. Well, the easiest. And th that's the part I really Yeah, want. the yeah, easiest way to describe it is that I think I call myself um, an art, um, a historian, ethnographer, and a storyteller. Wow. So I guess that's the easiest way to describe my approach. And yeah, I am um, kind of exploring just the contradictions that exist in the place, um, like where India is between colonialism mm -hmm. and globalization. So oh. just the contradictions, the cultural hybridity. Yeah. Oh, it's like uh, we would write and you are doing it through your painting. Yeah. Is there yeah. something like it? Yeah. Very interesting. I mean. I never thought of like filling in history with paint so much representing through just painting. I think I'm, also like you you brought up Renaissance, so yeah. it's like at, like you know history painting actually goes pretty far back where oh. stories are told through painting. Yeah, even cave. Uh, I mean, the history of mankind began with cave paintings. They painted in the caves, and yeah. that's how we knew. Uh, now, quite often uh, we hear that artists are visionaries or people who mm -hmm. see beyond the times. Uh, how would you say like to this concept of artists? Um, for example, uh, if I see a still life, it's like my thoughts and views are blocked there because it's a still life. This is, I see more through the artist's eyes. Or if I see a scenery, I know the artist saw it this way, so more like seeing through that person. But it's like abstract painting and others' imagery forms that leads my thoughts on. Then, then I think it's uh, artists are more visionary in their people they, they want to represent. I think art definitely plays a role there but I'm I feel like I don't know that's too complicated to get into okay it's so because I f like for example definitely especially I guess it's complicated by the presence of the camera in mm -hmm. the world because that does make you see things differently mm -hmm. so in a way that I guess is a kind of a visionary function but I don't know and it, it, yeah, that's too complicated to get into. Hmm. Oh, no, so let's go to like, like a can a, of worms. one of the most uh, well known paintings of Mona Lisa and her smile. Mm -hmm. It's like it continues to be the smile, the Mona Lisa smile that leads this mysterious smile. Like it's um, in that thing, don't you think Leonardo da Vinci was a visionary? I mean, the sweet smile of a woman, some mysterious, not only necessarily woman, I mean, anybody who smiles. The secret of a smile still lives on, no matter how long he painted it, how long ago. I think he was more of a visionary probably in other okay. things that he did, like his sketchbooks show mm -hmm. his, I mean, even technologically mm -hmm. the stuff that he, um, like he had diagrams of yeah. um, various technological mm -hmm. inventions. And I guess it depends on what we mean by the word visionary. Like, is it a prophetic role? Like, are you looking into uh, the one future? One who sees into the future, or yeah. it depends on whatever you do when you think it. Like, 
in a future term. Like innovative is something when you create something, make, mm. discover something. Mm. And this yeah. is like a, a art or even songs, mm. poetic, everything can be a visionary. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for sharing yeah. that. Uh, we also have to think more about vi visionary, how yeah. we, right? right. Uh, the word is a complex one. You, yeah. you are very right. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll go back to Dorothy. Uh, Dorothy, I was wondering, you know, that um, I know that you do lots of uh, music stuff, mm -hmm. uh, music uh, things, not only with, uh, I mean, I don't know how many places you are with your music, with the kids, you write mm -hmm. amazing songs for the kids, children, mm -hmm. and then you are with the sing-alongs, mm -hmm. with the adults. Yes. So can you share some of that as to what all sure. the things you are doing um, right now? Yeah, for, for over 30 years, mm -hmm. I was a teacher in the public schools, and I truly mm -hmm. love and honor the children and the adults who help to educate all of the people. So that was one calling. Mm -hmm. But within that calling, I did have this love of music. Mm -hmm. And when I have retired, I have looked for ways to keep music in my life and therefore in other people's lives. Mm -hmm. So I do have the Happy Valley Children's Chorus, okay. which is for children ages five and up. Generally, they're about five to 10 years old mm -hmm. because there are other opportunities for older children. I have um, the Curious Giraffe Show yeah. is a show of musical conversations with children who come on the show with me. And we talk about meaningful things, about the, the fairness or unfairness and how to share and how to make the world more fair mm -hmm. or how our difference, uh, the diversity in the world and the concerns for the climate and concerns mm -hmm. that are, anyway, it's a very fun and interesting mm -hmm. show through music. We get into very um, meaningful discussions. Uh, we do the Bridges um, Coffee mm -hmm. House and Open Mic is an invitation to the whole community, whoever will come mm -hmm. on the second Saturdays of the month, this coming Saturday is one, mm -hmm. from three to five o'clock at the Not Bread Alone First Congregational Church Dining Room. Okay. Anyone can come and sign their name and share what's on their heart. We have artists mm -hmm. who share their art. We have musicians, speakers, storytellers, and we get to know one another. Um, those, and we have the Healing Circle Singers, mm -hmm. which is using music to uh, companion and support people through their healing process, mm -hmm. whether that's emotional or physical or, or the world. Mm -hmm. And we just add our voices together and uh, it's, so yes, it's a passion of mine and I'm having a wonderful time doing it and I'm gonna do a little girl's birthday party soon. Oh, I visit a preschool and sing with them once a month. Mm -hmm. So in different ways. I, I visit the elementary schools. Okay. Um, so yes, different, different All over. opportunities. <laughs> Music. Yeah. And I should say there's the Children's Music Network. Okay. Oh. I am the uh, one of two of the Northeast Regional um, coordinators, okay. um, where people who, from parents or teachers or songwriters or performers or librarians, come, anybody who sees the gift okay. that children's, that is music for children, we come together and encourage each other and they have really supported me in doing some of these things. So do, I mean, I have been with you with the um, Valley, the Happy Valley Happy Children's Valley Chorus Children's you Chorus. helped me with last yeah, year. I was yes. there with you. But uh, when I talk to people with Amherst, uh, th they don't know about it. Mm. I, but uh, maybe I would really request you that you, we really know about you, spread yourself more and more. Is there any place where, how we can get in touch with you? Like, yes. what's the easiest way to get in touch with I you? I have um, a website called mm -hmm. strike a chord music mm -hmm. um, dot org mm -hmm. that you can go to. You can go to my um, email okay. and uh, my Facebook page, okay. both of those. Um, very happy to give you that information. Okay. And I appreciate any help of getting the word out because I would love for more people to enjoy those yes. things. Yeah. We too, we too want to know about it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Pocheta, I, 
I did uh, talk to you and I just was amazed at all the things you do. You are an artist, you are a poet, and you do curatorial writing. So is, where can we find out more information about your work and all the work that you do? Do you have a website like Dorothy? Can yeah. you tell us what that is? How um, can we find that? Yeah, so there is a website uh, with my work and everything mm -hmm. uh, called it's prochitaolson.com. Okay. And Facebook page. It's mm -hmm. kind of like hard to be in the digital world these days without all of these trappings. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm not super active on Facebook, but I think <laughs> yeah. Instagram is one thing that I do enjoy. So that's like, this is a photography side you do? Yeah. Wow. It's what, like a what hobby. don't you do? I mean, we all, I guess, it's like part of being creative. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I think this is a force that's right, inside us whenever we tend to be creative. And it's not only, uh, everything is a creation. If you cook, that's a creating thing that's you do, true. whatever you do in life. And, and if it's a driving force within us, whatever we do, that takes us to places. And we don't, we often think quite impossible, but one day we do it because the driving force takes us there, yeah. mm -hmm. don't you think yeah. so? So I hope to, and you just mentioned you sang someday, and I hope someday we'll add, and we'll have two musicians together. Wait, what? I didn't say nothing. You, you, <laughs> learned, you learned about, <laughs> yeah, you said about learning Nazrul songs or something oh, yeah, when you that's were small. When I was yeah, yeah, yeah. younger. Well, you know, I just, we don't want to let go of anything that you have, any creativity. Only if you want to you scare your viewers. <laughs> no, no. I'm sure we you all love it. can keep singing. And, and some of us are more comfortable singing in large groups, you know, so you don't want to feel singled out. Yeah, but yeah. it's just fun to sing. Now, the funny thing is, keep the door open. Know, keep I the mean, door I open. I started singing almost after 30 years, but thanks to Dorothy, I became more, less self conscious about what I, she said. You know, I thought we have to shout loudly whenever <laughs> sing. She said, no. You sing what you're comfortable with. And it's just being yourself uh, that really helpful. Yeah. I mean, you really helped me a lot. Right. So wonderful. thank you. And, and we'll take a short break and okay. we'll be back. And this time we'll be back with music and a little bit of Procheta's art to share with you. Great. 